Singapore, all able-bodied male citizens have to serve a couple of years of military service. Two now, two and a half back in the days of which we are speaking. Now, Singapore is considered to be a rather spooky island. Despite being a highly developed major urban metropolis, it has plenty of dark and creepy corners. Many of these corners are found in the various bases and training areas of the Singapore Armed Forces. So back in the year 2000, I was a combat medic with an infantry battalion. While we still had to run around with the riflemen in the mud and the jungle during training, our lives while we were back at base were actually quite good. This was because the medical center at our base served as the medical center which supported the Ministry of Defense itself. Thus, the facilities were quite plush, and while it sucked having to duck out of the way if you looked a bit scruffy and a general or other bigwig was coming in for a checkup, the benefits were that we didn't have to clean the facility ourselves and that we got air conditioning and TVs in the waiting area. There's a story about the center itself, but this isn't exactly what I'm sharing today. Now, being a medical center, we ended up producing quite a bit of medical waste. Contaminated sharps, needles, used dressings, etc. All these went into yellow sharps boxes and these were supposed to be collected once a week and disposed of by a waste contractor. With the usual efficiency of the army, there was a screw up with the scheduling and they didn't come in for a whole month. So far, this wasn't an issue. The sharps boxes were piling up full of bloody needles, but honestly, they didn't take up much space. So we stacked them discreetly at the back of one of the treatment rooms. Unfortunately, it was around this time that a newly incoming bigwig with too much time on his hands, decided that he wanted to conduct a series of inspections of the medical center. Sharps boxes piling up on disposed of wouldn't reflect well on the staff sergeant in charge of the medics, so he told us to get rid of them. How? we asked. I don't give a fuck. Make them go away. Keep them in your bunk for all I care. Our bunk was two floors above the medical center, and it was, honestly, quite awesome for an army barracks. As medics, we weren't under the direct chain of command of the infantry officers, so none of them bothered to come inspect our bunk. As a result, we had it set up to our liking, with a TV, stereo, and PlayStation in the corner. We used to hold serious crash team racing tournaments. The bunk itself was a large room with windows along one wall facing outside and another set of windows and a door on the other side facing the corridor. We covered the corridor windows over with newspapers so no one could see in. The remaining two walls had beds and our cupboards at intervals. Around 12 beds in all, six to each wall, the PlayStation, stereo, and TV were in one of the corners along the corridor wall. We ended up piling the sharps boxes at the other end of the room under the outside windows. A number of Malay medics weren't very happy about the situation because according to their traditions, blood and other bodily wastes in a living space invited unclean spirits. Anyway, there was no choice as our staff sergeant would make our lives miserable if we didn't get rid of the boxes and we couldn't just dump biohazard waste in the trash. The problems started that night. A number of guys experienced sleep paralysis. Among them were the guys who had protested about the boxes 
so I dismissed it as mass hysteria initially. The second night, I woke up to hear music playing. This wasn't unusual because a lot of the guys would sit up smoking and playing cards until 1am or so most nights. I had little interest in cards, so I'd just sit with them for a while and go to bed by midnight after a final smoke. Usually the buggers drifted off to bed without turning the radio off, so more often than not, I'd wake up at 3am and go turn it off before going back to bed. There was another bed between me and the radio, but that guy was a very sound sleeper, so the radio never bothered him. So that night, I woke up at 3 with the radio playing softly but irritatingly as usual. I was gathering the energy to sit up and get out of bed when I realized two things. First of all, the room was cold. Not cool. Cold. There we were, one degree above the equator in June, in a room cooled only by fans, and it felt cold. Secondly, the radio was changing channels. This wasn't a set with a remote control or anything. It had a solid slider which you move to change frequency. It wasn't just moving up and down through the channels either. It was pausing on certain stations. Not just the English language stations we were all listening to, but oldie stations featuring classic Malay and Chinese songs from the 50s and 60s. Like an old man trying to find a channel he liked. I still figured that it was one of the guys listening to the radio in the dark for some reason, so I sat up and looked over. There was no one in front of the radio. It was dark, but there was some light flickering through the street lamps outside and from the corridor. I would have been able to see at least a silhouette anyone had been there. Nothing. Just a frigid room and a radio which was changing channels itself. I noped right out of there, pulled the covers over my head, and went back to sleep. The next morning at breakfast, the sound sleeper in the bed next to mine came up to me. He looked worried and tired. When I asked him about it, he asked, you heard it, too? He refused to say anything else about it. <laughs>